and talk about the concept of normalization for categorical variables. So normalization is a concept in statistics and the context in which I'm using it here, I'm referring to categorical data. So for instance, here we have how many grandmaster titles were awarded in 2017. So this is for chess data. So here are the categories are the countries. So Argentina, Armenia, Australia, and so forth. These are the categories of data that we're looking at. And then for each category of data, there's a numerical value. So for instance, in 2017, there was one grandmaster title awarded in Argentina. And similarly, for India, that category has six entries. And so you can see it's much larger. Now this data is correct in the sense that it accurately represents the, the information. Uh, however, for our purposes, it doesn't act, it can be a little bit misleading in the sense of the takeaway message from this data. So here specifically we know that there are many many people in India and there are many fewer people in Germany. So the relevance of that fact is that you wouldn't expect as many grandmasters to come from Germany because there are fewer people in that country compared to a country like India where there are many people present and therefore you'd expect there to be many grandmasters. So this is the, the sense in which I'm referring to normalization. In order for us to detect whether or not these differences are meaningful, we need to divide, say, the number of grandmasters from Germany by the, by the number of people in Germany. And similarly, for India, we would need to know how many people are there in India, and then we can divide the number of grandmasters to get a normalized uh, sense of how many grandmasters per thousand people, let's say. So that's, that's the, an example of normalization. So here, because our categories are countries, and we're looking at the number of people who have a certain rank, it would make sense to divide each of these by the number of people in that country. I'm going to pull up another example where normalization is relevant. So here we have, for the city of Chicago, uh, the, number, uh, the, the type of vehicle that was towed by the city. So on the, on the bottom axis here we have the make of the vehicle, so Chevrolet, Ford, Nissan, T Toyota, and Honda, so forth. And then we have the number of Chevrolet vehicles that were towed for a given year, so slightly more than 800. And so you might look in this, even though it accurately, re accurately represents the data, it seems strange that the people towing vehicles would pick Chevrolets to be towed more often. That's what the data looks like. However, it's more likely that there are just a large number of Chevrolets compared to the number of Fords in Chicago. And therefore, in order to accurately convey this story, we need to uh, figure out how many Chevrolet vehicles are there in Chicago versus how many vehicles are there uh, that are of type Ford. And so again, we have categorical data. And in order to figure out whether any of these differences are meaningful, we need to divide by the total population size for each category. So I would need to know how many Chevrolets are there in Chicago, and then I would divide this number here, like 850, by the total number of Chevrolets. And then I would divide the total number of, uh, the number of towed Ford vehicles by the total number of Ford vehicles in Chicago. And again, it's just with respect to the population size for a given category, that's how I normalize this data. Otherwise, it looks suspicious that Maybe the people towing vehicles you know, are not so interested in Buicks. I think that's a strange observation, but it could be what you include from this uh, visualization if you don't normalize. All right, one more example where normalization is uh, relevant. So here we see uh, the categories are years. So I'm looking at the 2008, 2009, 2010 data. And this is the number of air carrier accidents in the United States. 
And again, these values are changing, and so maybe we might assign some story to the fact that this is varying. But what's really important here is to figure out how many total air carrier flights were there in 2008. And then we would divide this number by that total count, and then we'd be able to meaningfully compare, because if there were more flights in 2009, this may actually be lower or higher than the previous year uh, once you've normalized the data. So here, to, to reiterate, our categories are the year, and we would need to normalize this variable by the total population count of how many flights there were for a given year. Then we'd be able to say that there was a meaningful change in the trend here.